What's up, everybody, and welcome to StarCast Episode 3. Technically, I mistitled the last one. Last one should be Episode 2, but I titled it Episode 3. So welcome to StarCast Episode 4. You know uh, what? The numbers don't really they matter. They don't matter that much. It's just like for the sake of understanding how many we've done and all that stuff. But so like, this is three slash four. It will be messed up for the remainder of this podcast time for, on the internet. Yeah. It'll be probably messed up for as long as this podcast continues. Exactly. Like one day we're going to be on episode 457 and then somebody's going to be like, um, actually, is it 458? Like because of that error from a long time exactly. ago. Exactly. That's how it's going to work. But we welcome to episode four. Shut up, car. Yeah. Cameo from the car horn. Welcome to episode four, guys. We got some Star Wars news. Uh, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Mm-hmm. But first, we have no sponsors because this is episode three slash four yes. and not episode four D. If you're interested in sponsoring this podcast, potentially, uh, if anybody is out there watching, you can check it out using the business email in the description down below. Yep. And we'd be interested to talk with you. With out of the way, Star Wars time. Yes. Let's begin. Kevin Feige, along with Kathleen Kennedy, Hmm. are going to be producing a Star Wars movie. Now, we don't know what Star Wars movie. We don't know if it's one that's been announced yet. Uh, We just know a Star Wars movie, or if it will be separate from the trilogy. Yes. Personally, very excited. I think this is, like, the best news that we've ever had for this franchise. As far as, like, creative minds attached to a project go, I think that... Kevin Feige has, like, the most prestigious filmography in, like, all of Hollywood right now. So, like, having him attached to a Star Wars movie is the coolest thing they could do. Because he cares and he knows exactly what he's doing. He's been in this industry and has been successful in it longer than, or more successful than, like, anybody that I could think of with that job specifically. So, like... This is some of the best news I think we've had yet, other than maybe things like, oh, John Favreau is directing a Mandalorian TV series. You know? It's mm-hmm. pretty cool. What do you what do you think, sir? Uh, I'm really, really excited. I think that a lot of the Marvel movies are really quality. In fact, like ninety nine percent of them mm-hmm. are really great. And I think with Kevin Feige at the helm producing a movie, which I think has been one of the major problems for this new era of Star Wars is the yeah. on the producer side, mm-hmm. I think we're going to get one awesome fire product, honestly. Yeah. So I think that it will be nice and also beneficial for Kathleen Kennedy maybe to see Kevin Feige at work. Mm-hmm. Because while I don't hate Kathleen Kennedy, I don't think that she's done the best job that she could have with the property. Um, being put in charge of it all and like all this agenda pushing and trying to push an agenda I think without winning the audience over yeah. like Marvel is kind of they're becoming more agenda driven as well as far as like their politics but they won over the fandom first yeah and I think Star Wars just kind of jumped the gun and a thing that I think is important is even though there is like this kind of agenda thing going on right now with Uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Uh, when you look at, like, what that job entails, what it means to be the president of a company, either Marvel Studios or what's the official name for Star Wars? Does it just... Do they have, like, a Star Wars studio branch or something like that? Lucasfilm? Lucasfilm? Is it Lucasfilm? Yeah. Okay, so... um, uh, Kathleen Kennedy is the president of Lucasfilm. Right. And uh, that job... You have specific specific things that you need to do, and Kevin Feige is much better at a few things than uh, Kathleen Kennedy is. Number one being hiring the right people to make the right projects, because uh, Kathleen Kennedy has this terrible, terrible track record with um, hiring directors and then firing directors and rehiring other directors. It's it's so weird, and when you look at like Kevin Feige's job. Kevin Feige, like, very uh, frequently will pick some super random guy that nobody has ever seen a movie from and then make him make a movie. And then that movie turns out to be amazing. And it's like, it's just so out of left field. Like, nobody knew who John Watts was. And John Watts has made two amazing Spider Man movies. Oh, I see what you, you did see. There. There you, yeah, there you go. 
and it's like all he directed like a little horror movie called Clown that's yeah. like terrible. And then uh, a movie with Kevin Bacon called Cop Car. Which is pretty okay. It's pretty okay, but it's like, I I don't know how they like looked at this guy and said, let's make him make a Spider-Man movie. That's the genius of Kevin Feige, but man. He's done that with the Russo brothers. He's done that with James Gunn, even though James Gunn has worked on a little bit more things than that. But it's like never anything the scale of like Guardians of the Galaxy. And he just has such a good track record and they keep these directors. There was only like one big mistake and that was with Edgar Wright. But I mean, that was like literally... A decade of like putting back that Ant-Man movie and then eventually the creative vision was just completely different now I'd obviously prefer an Edgar Wright Ant-Man movie because Edgar Wright's a great director but point is he's great at that job and what I think this is is I think it's more of like Kevin Feige being like a producer coach Mm -hmm. you know and who's to even say that this is going to be the one movie that he does because Kevin Feige has been making like Marvel movies ever since the first X-Men movie in the year 2000. He didn't just start with the MCU. He started about a decade earlier and he's produced all those Marvel movies like the Spider-Man movies, the Fantastic Four movies. Like he's produced everything with a Marvel thing on, even like Punisher movies. And um, so it's like clearly he probably has some time. He could do this job with a lot of stuff. And um, the, the, the MCU is kind of already in this place where it's like, I think they have such a well thought out plan and the tone is so consistent already that like he could probably relax off of that a little bit and um, put more effort, put into, more Star effort into Star Wars, which I honestly would not mind seeing because in my opinion, I think the, the Marvel movies have kind of peaked. We're probably not going to get anything that great like like post Endgame. Um, and I really, really want to see some cool stuff happening with Star Wars because what has happened has been a little underwhelming. Um, but I don't know. I think it'll it'll be a cool, at least coachable moment for Kathleen Kennedy, and if not, maybe even a longer lasting um, partnership. Like partnership between them. Because Kevin Feige is just a unique brain. You know, he's like the best in the industry right now. I concur, Doctor. Yeah. Anyway, so now let's go ahead and answer some of the questions that we have. Because besides that, there's not really a lot of news. The only other news that we have is that Brie Larson could potentially be cast in this Star Wars movie, which I know a lot of people are against. Uh, like, I have never seen such negative reaction in one of my like YouTube videos <laughs> yeah. before than when I said that Brie Larson was a potential individual to be cast in these Star Wars movies. Yes. So, it's interesting. Uh-huh. Uh, I understand why people dislike Brie Larson. With that said, I don't think she's a horrible actress. Yeah. I, I just think that she uh, she kind of overstepped where her boundary was because she believed herself to be more popular and more untouchable than she was. Yeah. That's kind of my perception of her. And she she comes off as really arrogant in a lot of the, of the interviews and stuff. Yeah, incredibly arrogant. So um, I don't like that. As an actress, though, I don't have a problem with Brie yeah. Larson. I think the Captain Marvel character is kind of boring, but I don't have any problems with... With Brie Larson <laughs> as like a, as like an actor. Yeah, I mean, like she has an Academy Award for a reason. Like she is a good actress, and if you haven't seen Room, I would definitely recommend watching it because she really does show her chops in that movie. Um, and it's really just like her personality that people don't like. Right. All you got to do is watch those like movie interviews where like she's with the cast of like the Avengers and stuff, or even like that. She she did a thing. Um, was it by that Wired? Um, yeah, YouTube the Wired channel? auto correct interview. Yeah, and it's like she just comes off as like so snobby and like arrogant and like she's better than everybody else. I actually had the idea that I think would go a long way to like fix a whole bunch of this. Yeah, don't cast Brie Larson as the hero. Cast her as one of the villains. Yeah, actually, that would probably work out pretty well. Mm-hmm, exactly. Yeah, and she's I I can't stress it enough. Regardless of like who she is as a person it's like she is definitely a quality actress so i don't think that that would really affect the film whatever they decide to do with her whether she's a hero or not and i i do not think that the faults of the captain marvel movie and that character being a little bit more boring than you would want her to be is necessarily brie larson's fault because she didn't write that script you know yeah um so like at the end of the day if you write a good character and have brie larson play her it should be a good movie. 
you know, I don't, I don't really see any problems with it. I would just hope that her outward appearance as an actual person probably, I just want it to improve because she's, she just seems so arrogant. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Especially like the, the types of characters she's trying to portray from what I understand mm-hmm. um, as like this, you know, inspiration to the, the new female youth of America. It's like, well, you know, don't be mean in your interviews if that's what you want to be. Yeah. They watch that too, you know. It's exactly. It's not just the movies. So as an actress, I ha- I have no problems with Brie Larson. As a person, mm-hmm. I I know people like Brie Larson, and it's just like, oh, just shut up. <laughs> like, stop talking. Like, you're, you're not – you are not God's gift to everybody. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. I hate that attitude. It's like the person that walks in the room, and it's like – I am so great yeah. because mm-hmm. it's like... It's the type of girl that is like, oh, you'd be lucky to get a date with me. Yeah, and it's exactly. like, no, I wouldn't. Exactly. <laughs> you drive me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Not in a good way either, in a bad way. Yeah. In like a, is that a personal attack type of way? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Brie Larson, get better at life. Yes. Also, be, be better at adulting. It had a, uh, at adulting. Also, I think you're a pretty good actress. Yes. So. You are definitely talented, Brie Larson. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Thank you. For... <laughs> we appreciate it. Yeah. And for the record, I don't think your movie is terrible. No, I don't think Captain I, Marvel I was, is terrible. I was passively entertained. Me too. For a good two hours. Not a Marvel podcast. I know. All right. Moving on. That's pretty much all the news we got. We got a poster for The Rise of Skywalker today. Uh, or like an Empire magazine cover, mm-hmm. and it showed nothing. Ray and Kylo. Yeah. So I, let that's me say cool. that that mask Kylo Ren is sporting, the old one that was destroyed and now fixed, and it's got these red glowing parts that I don't quite understand because I don't know why they're glowing. But hey, it's I, cool. I think it is cool. Yeah. Maybe he's making it glow with the Force. You know. I hate you. As as Gandalf once said, "Use the Force, Harry." You know, this will officially be Anthony's last podcast. <laughs> now let's answer some fan questions um, because that's all the news we got. Yeah, not much in the world of news. Uh, Edward Acorn asks, "What do you think about Kevin Feige's film that's being produced?" Well, well, let me just reiterate everything let me I just, just said. Reverse. That's our bad. <laughs> do you think there's a chance Star Thraven will one day find his way into canon, and if so, how? And this is from Chigo Senpai. Shout out Chigo Senpai. Um, that'd be cool. I love Revan. Yeah? Yeah. You do? I do. I think Revan's cool as crap, bro. Me too. Uh, he almost was canon in the Clone Wars show. They actually cut a scene of him. Oh, yeah. Him and Darth Bane were going to like talk to the sun. Through a holocron, of, right? Of Mortis. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think so, mm-hmm. maybe. I, I'm a little bit shoddy on all the details. But yeah. He was going to be canon, man. Uh, it came really, really, really close. Um, I think it's an inevitability that he's canon, quite yeah. honestly. He is the most popular non-canon Sith Lord, uh, I would say, by a lot. Yeah. Uh, he, he's more popular than Darth Bane, I think, and Darth mm-hmm. Bane's canon. So I think it's only a matter of time. Yeah. Uh, it's most likely that he will show up potentially in a medium that I don't think is film because I don't yeah. think that they're going to explore older public characters that have names. Mm-hmm. Uh, although it's possible that like Darth Revan is a character in the older public movies. Yeah. I don't think that that's how they're going to go. I think they'll do completely new characters. Yeah. I mean, they might name drop them for like, you know, cause they could do stuff like that easily if they want to include that character into canon or, but what's most likely going to happen is like either a comic book or a book. Yeah, for sure. Cause it's just so much easier to do that than it is to make a $200 million movie. Absolutely. <laughs> and even to like have a little like Easter egg in that movie, it's, it's kind of, it's far more difficult than you would think. But yeah. I think if he is going to show up, it'll be in a comic book or a book. For sure. But I do think that it's, it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when. Yeah, definitely. Um, this comes from Matthew Blizz. What was Luke doing in The Last Jedi when he and Rey were fighting in the rain? He gets hit and uses the Force right before he hits the ground, slightly levitating, then stops using the Force. What was the meaning behind the little Force use blip? I think he honestly... It doesn't really require a whole lot of explanation, I don't think. Mm-hmm. I just think he caught himself. 
Yeah. That's all I think it is. He, he caught himself from hitting the ground forcefully. Mm-hmm. As far as, like, why he didn't use the force, it's, like, not really his goal to beat Ray right here. I mean, yeah. we saw him, like, fight Ray just a little bit, and mm-hmm. he kind of handled her uh, when he, he had the antenna, if you remember that. Yeah. But I, I think as far as, like, his use of the force, he just caught himself. That's mm-hmm. it. Uh, this comes from Angelo, who also commented on our last podcast. Thank you. Do you prefer the Inquisitors in canon or Legends? They are so freaking different. Yeah. Um, like, the Inquisitors in Legends were way more powerful than the Inquisitors in canon. Um, for example, it's like you have Jarek, the Inquisitor, who's kind of like the main big villain mm-hmm. almost after Palpatine is. Uh, and then you have Mara Jade as an Inquisitor or kind of an an emperor's uh, like apprentice type thing, but yeah, these are characters with a lot of power behind them and a lot of punch behind them. And then in canon, it's kind of like these are barely Jedi knights that turn to the dark side of the Force. Mm-hmm. They're not comparable to like our big heavy hitting characters like Anakin or Luke. But as far as what do I prefer, you know, I think it's like a, it's not really fair because the canon inquisitors haven't been fleshed out to the level of like the legends inquisitors. Yeah. Like I said, the, some of the legends inquisitors are like the next version and next iteration of like a main villain. Mm-hmm. And the uh, the canon inquisitors don't really have a lot of development at all uh in in like Star Wars Rebels, which is the main medium that we see the canon inquisitors in, even then they don't get a lot of development. The grand inquisitor certainly got the most. And I think his story is interesting, how he was a Jedi Temple Guard and how he became frustrated with the fact that there was knowledge that he was not allowed to access. Yeah. So he became very frustrated. So I think that's interesting. Um, but as far as like which I prefer, it's almost like pick your poison. Mm-hmm. I don't view the canon Inquisitors as like the same power level as like the Legends Inquisitors. Mm-hmm. Uh, like significantly less actually, but... As far as the actual characters themselves, I don't... No Inquisitor is my favorite. I'll say that. In both. Like, an Inquisitor has never been a character that I point to and it's like, oh, this is my favorite Star Wars character. Yeah. Uh, do you do you know, like, enough about the Legends Inquisitors to answer? No. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> uh, this comes from Mason. He says, should the Force Unleashed 1 and 2 light side endings be canon? Um, I don't think so. Yeah, I think it's just kind of unnecessary. Right. And it would be so muddled. And they thought about bringing Starkiller into Star Wars Rebels, mm-hmm. which I think think makes a lot of sense. But Well, yeah, because it's like the same timeline. Yeah, but they do a lot of stuff in The Force Unleashed that would really mess with what Disney was making. And yeah. Starkiller is so far and beyond, like, power-wise, besides maybe characters in canon like Vader and the Emperor. Yeah. And I don't think that that's really point Mm -hmm. uh i think the point is in star wars it's like the more learned and aged you are the more more powerful you become yeah it's not so much like you just are like that instantly even luke skywalker i think that it was literally like they were making a video game where like wouldn't it be cool if star killer just like took a star destroyer with the force and crashed it onto a planet and it's like should anybody like that be able to pull off a feat like that yeah no (laughs) that's like a darth vader emperor thing yeah but that's literally why that happened. So to have him be canon, it's like he's very unnormally powerful. Uh, this next question question comes from Artaka. I hope I said that right. What kind of medium, movie, TV, book, etc. do you think would work best to tell the story of what happened with Thrawn and Ezra after the end of Rebels? Follow-up question. In a perfect world, what medium would you personally want to see the story played out in? Okay, where do I think it's going to play out? Number one, probably comics. Uh, That's kind of where they tie up everything together as Mm -hmm. far as like, oh, this is what's happening here and uh, this is what we missed. We're seeing Mm -hmm. that now with the Kylo Ren uh, Snoke comic book. It's kind of covering Kylo's training under Snoke. It's literally retconning the movies without filming anything. A little bit, yeah. yeah. So I would say a comic book. But I would like to see it in another TV show. I would love to have another animated TV show announced in the hue of the Clone Wars, which I don't think is impossible. In fact, Mm -hmm. I would say it's an eventuality. Mm -hmm. Because Rebels and Clone Wars were really successful, both of them. Yeah, so like when they end, just like make a new one. 
Why exactly. Not? And put it on Disney Plus. Yeah. I honestly would not be surprised if that's the ultimate goal. Star Wars Resistance is so disappointing. Yeah. Uh, I will say. <laughs> I didn't I, need to watch that. I can't watch it. I can't watch it. Um, but I would love to see them return with the same quality of the Clone Wars, especially now with this new season that they're doing. Yeah. And like the animation quality and the story. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love to see that. So an yeah. animated. Uh, next question. Why can no one accept how wonderful The Last Jedi is? I think a lot of people do yeah. like The Last Jedi quite a bit, and a lot of people hate The Last Jedi. I fall right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Luke Skywalker has always been like my favorite character, uh, besides Darth Vader is in canon. So to see Luke not really be involved and to see his role, I don't want to say. It, it definitely was subversive for me in a way that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, it's like, is that my own headcanon that I've read Legends books of Luke Skywalker being just the most OP individual in the whole Star Wars galaxy? And then I see Luke Skywalker and he doesn't even use the Force. Mm -hmm. Is that a problem with me? Or is that like, <laughs> or is that Disney Star Wars not delivering what people want to see? It's That's where I lie with The Last Jedi. Yeah. I think as a movie... It is okay. It's mm -hmm. one of my least favorite Star Wars movies. I do not like the Canto Bite stuff. I think it is pointless. Mm -hmm. um, but I can see why the stuff with Luke and Rey and Kylo and Snoke would be compelling for a lot of people. And yeah. I think that Kylo is my favorite character of this new trilogy. And I mm -hmm. think that the development that they do with him in The Last Jedi is uh, really cool. Yeah. Uh, I think half of the humor works really well in The Last Jedi, and the other half is just awkward. Yeah. But all the stuff with Kylo Ren and him being mad at the Falcon and stuff, mm -hmm. and I want every gun we have pointed at that man when Luke walks out. It's There are moments in The Last Jedi that I think people kind of overlook. Yeah. But for me, it was ultimately super, super disappointing. Mm -hmm. It's almost like... Parts of the movie were exactly what I wanted, with Luke actually going out and facing down the whole first order. Yeah, but then it but not then it's being not actually him. Yeah, so yeah, I I think a, a good way to put it is that with this movie as controversial as it is, there are a lot of people that are either I am a half glass full kind of guy, or I am a glass half empty kind of guy, and both you and I are pretty much like I have a glass, you know. Yeah, it's a movie that I've seen. It's not my favorite. It's there. I have problems with it, and there are things I enjoy. I don't praise it or hate it. It's just a movie that exists. I wish it was better. That's it. You know? Me too. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the last question that we had that I think we have time to answer. Yeah. Any wrap-up thoughts about news, stuff like that? Um, Not particularly. You know, good on Kevin Feige for helping and putting his part in to make Star Wars great again. You I know. really, really, really hope it's another movie that has not been announced, uh, and I hope that Kevin Feige yeah. takes a more active role. It would be cool if this was a completely new thing that we just have no idea what it is. Yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. because I, I want as much Star Wars as I can get. Yeah. And I think that maybe behind the scenes a little bit, Disney is realizing that Marvel has kind of uh, potentially peaked, mm -hmm. and now I see them like moving a ton of resources into Star Wars. I really do see that actively happening. Well, yeah, it makes sense. Because if you look at like what Disney is probably overlooking, it's like, all right, we just had a movie that made like $3 billion. And uh, now we're going to be putting our time and effort into this Disney Plus thing. We're trying a bunch of new stuff. But the point is, here's a franchise that definitely needs our attention. Because there is a movie in the Star Wars uh franchise right now that's in the red mm -hmm. so it's like they want to get that making that three billion dollars the same way endgame did so it makes sense for and of all the properties that they have star wars is the one to do yeah. it yeah i'm sure bob Iger like looked at kevin feige at one point and said who cares about spider-man make a good star wars movie for us please like mm -hmm. we need something to happen here and i'm seeing that switch and the switch that mm -hmm. a lot of fans have have cried out for yeah so I'm really happy about that. I'm excited yeah. for the direction is star that Star Wars is going. Mm -hmm. I don't like the attitude, too little, too late. I don't like that attitude. I think that Star Wars is completely salvageable. Yeah. And I think that it's not too little, too late. I think we should 
just be excited about what's to come. Mm-hmm. Because in my own personal opinion of this Disney Star Wars era, there's only one movie that I genuinely don't like. Yeah. And that's The Last Jedi. Mm-hmm. I feel like Disney is not unforgivable. Yeah. Good parting words there, champ. Thank you. (laughs) Anyway, guys, like I said, if there are any sponsors watching this video or potential sponsors, I don't think there would be, but if they (laughs) are, uh, we do have a business email in the description down below. So if you're interested, hit us up there and my buddy Anthony will be sure to talk to you and uh, maybe sort something out. Cool. If you're just a viewer, I love you so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for devoting your time into watching these. Absolutely. It's definitely very nice of you. For real. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it helps us out a great deal, and we're going to continue to do this. Hopefully we get bigger, we get more traction. Uh, we're going to eventually get iTunes iTunes links in the description down below if you want to check us out there, if you just want to download it and mm-hmm. listen to it in the car or at the gym or whatever. Uh, we'd also appreciate that a great deal. Anyway, guys, may the force be with you. See you next time. Have a great day.